click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the database design for a bank enterprise. We will use that for a general banking scheme, what are the features or entity sets and attributes we will describe and finally we will draw the ER diagram. The bank enterprise for entity relationship diagram drawing, we first need to have two parts. First, the collection of data and then reduce it to a relational schema. And finally, use the relational schema inside an ERD to get an actual database conceptual schema which can be implied to any of the enterprise as a banking. So to do so, we should begin our database collection. But before that, we need that what are the entity relationship alternatives that we can provide to it. The first one is whether to choose an attribute set or an entity set. That the design issues we faced on ERD, that we can choose either an attribute or an entity set depending on the banking need. The next one is the alternatives of the entity set and the relationship sets. So we can use the relationship set as a part of the entity set and vice versa. Whether to choose one will again depend on this particular need of the enterprise here banking. Next is whether to choose and generalization. The generalization is an easier relationship that exists between two entities. Now to choose a generalization or not will our enhance the ERD. Next is to choose an aggregation. The aggregation means that we are actually having the relationships as a higher level entity set. So to choose it aggregation or not, it'll help to enhance our ERD for the banking scheme. And lastly, whether to choose a strong or weak entity. First know that weak entity is always derived from the strong entity and has also to be attached with the strong entity. So if I am attaching the weak entity, then we have to add the strong entity to it. So whether to add it or not, we have to decide it according to our need. Next are the data requirements that we need for our banking enterprise. To first is the bank. The bank is the final element on an enterprise system of a database on a banking. Now the bank has got branches, so we need to collect the branch information like the location of the branch, or we can say the contact number of the branch and all. Next, the bank has the prior information and this is the customer. So the bank has customers, the customers can has their name, address like the street, city, and the zip code as a part of it. The customer can also have the accounts in the banks and bank will have all the information on the customer, their account number, their loan number to it. Next coming with the employee. Employee are the working part of the bank, that who works for the bank. So we got the employee ID as the identification to an employee for a bank. Next, we got their name, address, contact number, and the employee dependent, and if there is any physical disability of the employee as an information. Next, we go with the account. As for the account information, a bank can have two type of account. One is the savings account, another is the checking account. For the savings account, we have all the account information like the account number, the account holder's name. Also an account can be attached with many of the customers or a customer can be of many of the accounts. So either the accounts can be attached with many customers or the customers can have many accounts. This information we need to store. Along with it, the fourth, the savings part, we will use the specialization that will have the deposited amount and for the checking part or the account will have the overdraft amount. Next come with the loan account. The loan deals with what loan has been taken from a customer to the bank. 
Now it's a borrower relationship. We'll have the borrower as the customer name, the loan ID to identify the particular loan, the loan amount on which the loan was taken, the interest of which that loan will be calculated to. So these are the data that we need to have for consuming and then making a conceptual schema on a banking database. Next, we will construct the entity sets on that particular banking. So first entity will have the branch. So the branch has got the branch name and city and its assets. As the branch name is the primary key, we can give the identify of the branch. Because a bank can have a branch in the city, but cannot have two branch names that is same. So if say a city has got many branches, so a branch name can be repeated in the cities, but it cannot be duplicated because it is the primary key. So to identify the branch, the branch name is the first one. Say for a city of Brooklyn, a branch can have Perry, a branch can have the richer, or branch can have the India. So in this way, a city has got many branches, but all the branch names must be unique to it. So that is the primary key to the branch entity. The next is the customer entity. For the customer entity, we'll have the branches like CID, C name, C street, and C city. And we'll have the customer ID or the CID as the primary key because it will uniquely identify the entity and we can have a combination of CID or C name as a primary key. But that will be a candidate key, not a super key. Next, we will go to the next, that is account. Now the account number being the primary key of the account entity and the balance as another attribute because we need only two information, the account number and balance. Now see, we need to specialize the account into two types, that is when savings and another is checking. So we need an easy relationship. We'll see that how to do to provide an easy relationship. So this is to specify that an account is a either savings or a checking. For the savings, we had the specialization attribute interest rate that is being the account balance and account ID or a part of it. And for checking, it is the overdraft amount that will be appended with account number and balance. Now next type is the employee. For an employee, we can have the EID as their unique identifier or the primary key, the employee name, the salary, the telephone as a multi-valued attribute, also the dependent, which is also a multi-valued attribute because an employee can have more than one dependent. Next, the base attribute is the start date on which the employee length or the how many time the employee is working, we are having the derived attribute. So this one, the attributes that we can attach to an employee entity. The last one is the loan.
So for the loan entity, loan number and amount are the attributes with the loan number as the primary key. Now we can have a weak entity set we will describe as the database design. Now we will go for what are the relationships that we can introduce in this database. So the first type of introducing relationship will be the borrower. The borrower is that a loan has been taken by a customer. So the customer is being a borrower. Next is the loan branch. Loan branch is the relationship between the loan and the branch which designates that the originating branch from which the loan was taken. The next one is the loan payment. The loan payment relationship exists between the loan and a weak entity payment which will define that what payment on what date that has been made to the loan. Next is the customer banker. Well, the customer banker relationship lies with the customer and an employee that a customer can have a particular banker relationship either as his personal banker or as a loan account holder. The next is the important one as it works for relation. Now the employee works for the bank and that is the relation with an employee with this bank. Now we will design the ERD for this banking enterprise and we will use only the entity sets name here because of the space consumption. So the nums of the attributes that we have defined earlier, we are avoiding it in the design. First, we will die to describe the weak entity that we have here, that is the payment. So without describing what is a weak entity, we are directly saying that payment is a weak entity. And for the payment, that has got relationship with the loan as a loan payment. So as we know that weak entities are derived with the double rectangle and the double diamond for the relationships. So what are the attributes that we can have for the weak entity? That the payment number, the payment date, and the payment amount, while being the payment number primary key to the weak entity. So here I have marked the primary key for the weak entity, not with a line, but with a dashed line. So that is the weak entity that we have a relation with the loan entity, with a loan payment relationship. Now let us look at the other ones. Next, I will do the role definition of a particular entity. So the role definition will be given to only the employee that deals with the works for relation. So what are the roles that we have for an employee? Either he is a manager or he works for a manager or is a worker of the manager. So this is the role definition part of an ERD. Next, what relation we have from a customer to an employer? It is the customer banker relationship. Now we can add to the customer banker relationship and attribute that is called the type by meaning that we are attributing that either he is a personal banker or a loan account provider.
सो वॉट रिलेशन फ्रॉम द कस्टमर टू द लोन दैट इज अ बोरोअर टू द लोन next from this branch to the loan we have the loan branch relation that from which branch the loan is originating now from the customer to the account there is a relation known as depositor that the customer has been deposited to its account or not and the last relation that we have from a branch to this account that is a account belongs to this branch that is a account branch relationship so that is all all the relationships that we can provide in an erd of a banking enterprise and we should keep in mind that we if we want to add an attribute to the relation then we can add it for a specialized type of that particular bank and the account has also got types that is an easier relationship with the savings and checking but that has only a part of the account specialization and has no relationships with other one so a customer is a deposited to the account it can be either a savings or a checking but it has a primary relationship with the super class account not the sub classes so that is all for the video thank you for watching it stay tuned with ikira and subscribe to ikira